Hi there, it's Nick here again. Come to do some more fixing. Now, I've been having a bit of a think about this project over the last few days and uh, kind of decided to decide what my next steps are going to be. Uh, I think what I'm first going to do is remove this fuel tank because it's hanging there by a couple of bolts and it's a bit of weight. I don't want it to bend and I also don't want it to damage what's behind it. And it'll also make it easy to get to a few uh, other bits and pieces around it. Um, I've just tested the spark and there doesn't seem to be a spark at the moment. Uh, but I don't think that's going to be a big problem. I imagine it's probably just gunky points or something along those lines. So I'll have a look at the magneto. But I'm also going to start removing these cowlings on the top. And uh, yeah, give it something to look at giving the engine a clean on inside. Getting the plugs out, that sort of thing. Um, yeah. I'm also going to go around later on uh, and take some better shots of the actual machine. Because I'm aware that my camera work in the last video was a little bit on the shaky side. Yeah, so to get this tank off, I'm going to have to actually uh, undo this little bracket here because the spark cables are tied to the um, cowling wall just to uh, get them out of the way, I suppose. I'll need that to go so that I can uh, get to the bolts underneath. Again, a lot of these screws seem to be coming pretty much straight out, which is nice. Check this nothing, just turning around on the other side. Yeah, there is, but it's easy enough that I can hold it. I need to find some string and tie that up. Yes, I definitely need to find some string or something or some wire and just hold that up while I do this. Otherwise it's going to go very bad very quickly. Right. I don't know what this actually is, but I've just found it. It's a nice, convenient, bendy thing. but it's going to do the job I need it to do, which is nice. Get despite all the appearances, all the screws and nuts and bolts seem to be nice and loose. Nice and free, I should say, not loose. Okay. Right, that's all the tank bolts on them. Now that that tank wall's off, what's suddenly become obvious is the original um, ready brown paint that would have been on the engine when, before they put it in the machine. They obviously put the cowings on and then gave it a spray. Uh, those came off so easily, it was ridiculously easy. Uh, you get, sorry about the uh, sound of helicopters flying over, there's a lot of them today, but it's obviously a busy sunny day at the airfield. Okay. So, under all these screws, and there's the top of our engine. Find out where that one's going in a moment. Now, when I was here last time, I believe I said that uh, this was an American engine. Well, it certainly is an American design, an American brand. I didn't notice until afterwards, it does actually say, uh, made in Australia under license by Donaldson Brothers and Tippett Limited. I don't know if that means they were just shipped over in uh, kits from America, or whether they actually um, 
had to manufacture the parts in Australia, I couldn't tell you. But uh, if anybody knows, let me know. That's, that's an interesting one. I actually had to stop in at Bunnings and buy some uh, Imperial Spanners because uh, I don't actually have any until today. Not in this country, anyway. And I had to make do with some cheapos because the decent ones there's a considerable difference despite them essentially being the same spanner set just in slightly different measurements the uh, imperial spanner sets are ridiculously more expensive so good old cheap as it was because um, they're good enough for what I'm doing and uh, I barely use them for anything else wonder if there's enough room to get that in there sticky. Not many of the bolts on this have been. I've had two bolts uh, on the cowlings and of course the uh, car itself was a bit difficult to take apart. Oh, yep, good, it's bendy enough to come out. Excellent. It's another piece off. A good levering point. There it is. <laughs> so that was the cover. The cork gasket's in pretty good shape, so I'm going to reuse that rather than get another one. Yep, as I suspected, uh, you can see here. Uh, the uh, cam follower is uh, right down and I can actually stick my finger between that and the top of the valve stem so we do have a frozen valve on one side of the the other one seems to be moving all right which is nice so I'll have to see if I can free that up there isn't also a lawful lot of compression on this cylinder as well so I'm uh, guessing that might be the same thing do have to work out exactly how to uh, take that off. I don't think that does anything inside under that cover. I think it is, no, that is literally just a pivot, so that's just a lever for something else that doesn't actually change anything inside inside there, because you know, I was trying to work out what would be in there for it to change, but nothing. That is just part of the lever pivot system used to control the throttle when the carb's in. And I believe I took a uh, spring off there. To buy me a box of split pin, split a box of split pins. Oh, that one's not too bad. Off you go. Okay, let's put that piece there. I think that size. Yep. Nope. Nope. Yep. Nope. Nope, yep, nope. There we go. Well, that's actually uh, quite loose already. Maybe the lever seized up at some point, and, or just the movement of that lever might have loosened it over the years. That's an interesting little, little bolt. Bolt, little thing on the end. A bit for a lever. Okay. Well, it worked last time. Try and find a good levering point to lever this little cover off. And off it comes. The gasket has been left in place this time. That's annoying. Oh, no. I'm going to have to find some more gaskets for that. Okay, this one's shredded. The cork's all brittle and it's wrecked. That's a shame. I'll have to find me some more gaskets for him. And certainly I did manage to, uh, let me zoom out a little bit. I did manage to find some gaskets for the carburetor in the end. I, you can't actually buy them from Australia, but it is actually, for some reason, cheaper to order from them, order them from America with the postage. So uh, I did that. 
Oh, well, that's enough to see. No problem. Mm, both those valves are touching the followers, which is good. Mm, okay, that side, they're both good. So, okay, so only a couple of minutes later, I have actually managed to get that valve moving. All I actually ended up doing was uh, I sprayed a load of um, So these RP7s, essentially like a W40, all these stuff. I sprayed it through the spring and up towards the top of the valve stem. Then put a screwdriver between the two things and just gently, when the follower came up, I just gently put some leverage between the two and press the spring up. And then I gently uh, leave it back down again using the edge of the spring. I'm trying to wind the engine with my foot, it's not helping him. As you can see, that's freed that valve up and there is actually already compression on that. That's made a big difference already. We actually have some decent feeling compression there on both cylinders. Let's see if I can't work out why we're not getting a spark. So I'm going to get the cover off the magneto and have a look. I suspect it's just corroded inside. So if they've been kept in a decent place, there isn't often there isn't a lot to go wrong with these magnetos unless you're unfortunate enough that the, uh, the insulation has gone and that needs rewinding or anything like that. Somebody did once tell me that there is uh, really a lot wrong with the magneto that you can't solve by putting it in an airing cupboard for a week. My house hasn't got an airing cupboard. You don't really see them in Australia. All right, so I've got the cover off the magneto. Uh, it does have a little distributor inside it. Oh, must be dropping screws. It does have a little distributor inside it, and the points inside that they could do with a clean, but they don't look bad. Interestingly, there's actually a little internal. You can see the bottom point. This is what actually. Um, So that's what actually comes off the coil. The coil touches that from here and then it actually passes through a piece of metal inside the cap and comes out here to touch the rotor arm. Then the rotor arm does the uh, two points in there, obviously. The rotor arm could do with a bit of a clean up, but it doesn't look too bad. It's not uh, particularly worn down or anything. It's just a bit black on the end. So you can actually see the um, points are pretty white and pretty corroded inside. The whole thing needs a blowout. I might go and find a compressor and an airline and actually uh, clean the whole thing out shortly. I don't want to take it off if I can help it because I don't want to have to take the front off and mess around with timing gears. So if I could do this in place it would be wonderful. Getting better. Something I found very useful in the age of digital technology is the fact that you, if you're having trouble seeing something, if you stick your phone under it, you can get a much better, clearer view of it, especially if you zoom in. You can actually, a lot of phones have an actual magnifying app thing on them for this very reason. So that bottom point's actually pretty clean now. Tiny bit more on that end. Okay, let's do the top. Wipe the file out. Feels a bit right, about right actually. Which is nice. The magneto is not uh, quite as lovely and clean as the car was, which is a shame, but uh, you can't have everything, and I think I got off lucky with that carburetor.
Okay, that's better. Oh, and he goes. Let's give that a little contact there. So that's the actual coil contact right there. Oh, so as you can see, this is actually on a springy system. I don't give you turn by hand, and it turns with the uh, with the engine off the timing gears. When it reaches a certain point, there's a, sp a spring system in there. It gets held back, and the spring gets wound up, and then uh, the spring is released, and so it has to flip over. And that's why it makes the clicking noise. And then I don't know if you can quite see it because the little pipes in the way. But right there, there's a round wheel that has a, a magnet on it. And the magnet fires underneath this coil and creates a, uh, a, a sort of magnetic, creates a voltage, that's what it does. Creates a voltage inside the coil. And that's used to create the spark. I'm looking at it, I think I'm going to have to find a new magneto gasket as well. I think I'm just going to have to buy lots of gaskets. Where the coil actually earths onto the chassis of the magneto is looking a little bit grotty, so I might actually just take that, if I can, take that off and just clean up that connection. For the moment I'm just going to see if the condenser works. If it doesn't work at all, the whole thing doesn't work at all, my next step will be replace the condenser, because that's most likely what would be wrong with it if it doesn't work up with this. I don't know how well you can see that, but it does appear to be a little bit pitted, but it's mainly just dirty. Let me zoom in. It's a little bit pitted, but it's mainly just dirty. They don't look like they're in that bad a condition. I've already given that one a little scrub. That's the carbon brush in the middle. So we'll give those a clean, and then we'll see if we get a spark out of it. There's a lot of silicon on this, uh, so someone's obviously sealed the whole thing out just to keep the damp out. So I'm guessing that might have been an issue at some point. But it looks possibly as though if you wanted to replace the cables, you had to pretty much replace the whole cap. So I'm going to try and revive these cables. There's probably not a lot wrong with them. I could be wrong about that, but I can't see any sort of screw or anything to undo to um, that holds the cables in or anything. Oh, they just unplug. Oh, oh, I see. Ah, oh, right. Oh, I'll give that a clean. So I'm going to give the, both these cables a, uh, a damn good clean up. Uh, there we go. Something that's happened sadly is the uh, spark caps, the contacts inside them are actually made of steel, which I was a bit surprised by, rather than copper, and uh, sadly they've corroded away and one of them's broken right off. So uh, I can still test the spark using one cable for both uh, things, but I'm going to have to get me some new spark cables. Or at least new caps to go on the cables. Okay, so the cap's back on. I had to brush all this aluminium casing off here because, you know, they figured the kill switch and things uh, and for, for that to work it needed to be nice and clean and it's hard to do that with that piece taken off. So I've just got a spark tester in at the moment that's got a wedge into one of the holes of the screwdriver, so hopefully, hopefully we're going to see something. Let's have a look. Great thing about it is you don't have to wind it very fast because of the springy action I showed you earlier on. You don't actually have to wind the handle very fast to get it to flip over, so let's have a look. Oh! That's going to be the next click. Oh, that's a nice big fat white spark. Do you see that? Oh, yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> I'm sounding way too excited about that. Lovely. You get it. With a well-working magneto, you get such a, uh, a lovely big fat white spark out of them. Okay, let's try out the other one. There we go, look at that. Oh, fell out, but oh well, it's done its thing. Wonderful. One working magneto, that means when I get the rest of this back together, I don't need to worry about the spark, the spark's working. Now, since I got that valve unstuck, I'm getting quite a lot of compression, which is a wonderful sign. So, um, yeah, 
The spark plugs are stuck in their grid and proper at the moment. I think they've kind of corroded slightly because of the steel that surrounds the, the uh, plugs. They've corroded slightly into the uh, top of the aluminium cylinder head. Uh, so I've um, just sprayed a heap of penetrating oil on them a few times. In fact, I'm going to give them another coat before too long. So there's a chance they're not going to come out today. I might have to just let them uh, sit soaking in oil. Uh, I actually watched a very interesting thing on uh, a YouTube channel called Project Farm. I don't know if you've ever seen that. He's a chap in America who does lots of tests of different uh, things and different chemicals that are available. And he went through all the best penetrating oils and he did a test in which he actually showed how far... It's amazing to think that it, in the tiny, tiny gap between the screw threads, how far the oil can actually get in there. So when they say penetrating, it really does actually get down into the threads. Uh, yeah, I pr recommend Project Farm. He's, he's good fun. Um, I particularly liked him trying to make a plastic cylinder head so you could see the, uh, the, the, the flash inside the cylinder. That was rather a fun one. Um, yeah, so my next thing, I'm going to put the valve covers back on. I'm running a little bit out of time today, so I'm going to probably, probably put a halt to the actual engine work today. I went and said that I went and said that it wasn't going to come out today, and actually, I just had another go at it, and uh, it's a little bit of a tap, but this plug is actually starting to turn. So, get this out there. Let's see what state the plugs are in when it last ran. Ah, oh, there we go. God, you were a pain. That's a good sign. Uh, it's got a uh, good old light brown, there's a little bit of oil in there, but it's got uh, largely what was left was white brown deposits, which uh, is a sign of a healthy running engine. I like that sign. If I put my finger in the hole and just fill. Oh yeah, I can feel some, some compression there, that's a really good sign. Uh, the other side's compression came back to life, as I said earlier, when I got that valve moving. Again, I'm being careful because I know it's an aluminium head and I don't want to ruin any threads or anything. <laughs> Turning the whole engine. Also, I want to break the exhaust. Well, I think it is actually made of steel, that exhaust. Let's move that around a little bit. There's a little gap in there, so I'll spray a bit of that in there. For winding it back in. Some uh, penetrating oil down into the into the threads and the whole thing. So they hadn't used this stuff before. So these RP7. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but uh, it actually seems to be pretty good stuff. Mm, yeah, I'm not happy with. That, it's coming out a bit, but it's putting up a real fight, so I do not want to do any damage. So, well, I'm going to leave that till next week and just spray a heap more stuff in there and let that work its magic. <laughs> Otherwise, I run the risk of uh, you know, ripping out the threads in the cylinder head because it's only aluminium, and I really, really don't want to see that happen. What I'm going to do spray a little bit on the threads on that one, maybe a bit on the plug itself. So I'm going to get a new pair of plugs. Just going to wind that one back in. So there's a bit of uh, lubrication in the threads. And also it'll keep the... Um, it'll just keep crap from falling in the cylinder while I'm... So yeah. Oh well, I've managed to get a decent amount done today. I'm happy that that magneto is working. Very happy in fact, because that would have been a 
hard thing to get another one of. Well, I say that, I'm sure somebody's used to selling parts for them online, you do find parts for these things online. Um, but it would have been pain, it would have been expense that I didn't need to spend. So yeah, I'm going to put those valve covers on and leave the actual engine for the day. And the next time I come in, I'll have another go at it. And then I'll, um, so once these are on, I'll go out and have a look at the machine.